This is always how it starts. Ew! Your room smells like boy. Mmm, I woke up hella early. Get out. Let me sleep more. Lucas, we're supposed to vlog today. Vlog our life. You know you top to ten out of ten. No. <laughs> Oh, bro, why am I sick? You're sick? I've been sick. It's like my sixth day. I just get over it. What do you want to do today? <laughs> I'm happy you came down. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since my siblings and I have all vlogged together, and I think it's just because, like, once you grow We're older. We're going our separate ways. <laughs> Gotta find my own way. Whoa. Like, yes. But in other words, life just gets complicated and it's just hard to find time. When we're in the same household, we You're just really- You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. We just really enjoy each other's company and just all we do is eat and talk, but we don't really go out and do things Good that are on my mind. <laughs> challenges. We do that and we f around, but I don't know. I just like the I'm only guidance that I've had for the videos that I've made have been from Instagram and what other people absorb, but my siblings and I just like we personally don't watch challenges like oh like let's film that too we just kind of go day by day and we're just like normal <laughs> i don't know how to describe it we don't like think of content to film and film it we're boring you're getting it all over my blanket this is loopy that my brother adopted from Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> I don't think we've introduced Loopy. She's just a little Monty Poo that my brother found while scrolling on Facebook, bored one day, and then my family drove to LA to go pick her up because she needed a home. And actually, she's from Korea. Every time we go, my dad's like, she's from Korea. <laughs> like at the park, there'll be some people who ask her like, oh my gosh, your dog is so pretty. Yeah, she's from Korea. <laughs> Dad has been up since 7 a.m. 8. 8 a.m. Cooking the feast. We, we taped the knob so nobody would mess with the temperature. <laughs> Just in case. You made chicken pate. Chicken liver with uh, cognac butter. Ooh. Mmm, it smells so good. Very French. Very ooh la la. Let's ooh -la -la. check on the beef. Yes. Smells so good. Lobster. Loopy. Loopy, I'm eating it for dinner. <laughs> We are having lobster mac, scalloped potatoes, and prime rib. And we're having a salad for lunch. It's all about balance. Mmm, the cheese smells delish. Down to the brine. Show you one, and then you could take over. I want to try doing it, and then you tell me that it's wrong. Lobster. Marry the lobster. First, this has been cooked salted water about three minutes because I want the centers to be still really, really raw. But I want to be able to take it out from the shell. I did nice it down. Get rid of these two guys, two little guys over here. Pull it out, and you go like this. You pull it away. Hear that crack? And you put it out so you have two bones that comes out with it. We're saving the shell to make any broth. In this case, he's making a stock for the lobster mac. You take the claw off like this, going down. You twist the head like this, take it out. And this you save later for things. I missed the claw actually. You, you just like this, snap it and then you pull Against it. the board, taking out this piece. This one, cover with a towel, give it a squish and give it a pull. And that's your tail, right there. All me. Where were you when I made it last time? With a claw, <laughs> with the bottom of your knife, right here. Give it a whack, and give it a and turn. And twist. And it comes out like that. Wow. This one, usually we need a scissor. And you need to cut it right here. Cut it in the middle. Opens up. Oh, oh. If you cut it on both sides, then you don't have to deal with that. But these are the most flavorful part of the lobster. Just like chicken, they're the lobster knuckles. That's why you become a chef, because you get the chef cut. Pieces like this, chicken wing and chicken back, that's the chef special, because no restaurant really served this. Now, in the lobster, there's this triangle that you want to remove. This thing is no good. That's their mouth. That didn't get removed. <laughs> I made it. Okay, ready? Hold on one second. Let me clean the board. A lot of people ask if you went to culinary school. No. On your mark. Get set. Go. My dad just worked at a seafood place. 
and trained a lot because he didn't have a green card until he married my mom. <laughs> so he had to do this BTS for free. We're timing him. Those are the beautiful lobster roll. Those are turned bright. How did he just Whoa. eat? Bright red. What the? He got a whole tail? Yeah. The guts are kind of <laughs> scary. Oh, oh. Yo. What's the time? 60 seconds. Oh. Oh. Everything is <laughs> de-shelled and cleaned wow. in how many seconds? One minute and 38 seconds. Okay, your turn. <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not cutting? Wait, it goes the same direction as the claw. The claw. Oh, that was so much quicker after you said that. No, why would you put the rubber bands in the meat section? If you guys watched my other vlog, Lucas made mac and cheese, lobster mac, and prime rib for me for my birthday. There you go. Good job. Nice. Can't believe you guys did this with no utensils. Wow. Hey. You see how the lobster is still like really rare in the middle? Mm, that's all, all the good that, stuff. All that pink. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, maybe clear. not the green, but the... So you never want to over overcook a lobster because it becomes rubbery and stuff. Mm. And then because I'm going to butter poach it later, he undercooked it. That's my favorite thing to do, just undercooking food so I can yeah. cook it later. All wow, right. Look at mom here. Wow, mom. Pretty. We're saving the cheese at the end when we bake it again to get that nice texture. So bake this for about two hours nice. almost. We grew the thyme in the backyard, right? Yes. Grow the time? Yeah. We grow our herbs. In the backyard where these munchkins play. <laughs> Thyme, rosemary, mint, basil, lemon. Um, basil, green onion, rosemary, Italian parsley. In the backyard. Nice! Good job, Lucas. <laughs> From Dick. getting into the cabin. <laughs> okay, what do I do? <laughs> no, 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 wait. You can kill the knife like that, so you want to use this part. Yeah, oh, there, there you go. go. Ah, perfect. You did that. Now you repeat that like six times. Shells and the juices and the head, and then the meat. All fresh lobster meat. From this, uh, I use the pan, and right now I have some shallots and garlic, and polarized uh, dry shiitake mushroom <laughs> that's roasted on the side here. My prime rib right now is looking at a pro very promising rare, medium rare, just by the touch. Very bouncy. Ooh. No, not there. Oh, sorry. Describe it. I want to Ooh. use this, which is what they call the dripping, and I put this on the cooking. cook it. Right now the oven is at 200 degrees, so it's not really cooking, it's just holding it. The idea is to cook my prime rib all day. Now, I use that dripping to make gravy. Gravy time. Damn. Whoa. I said sorry. Sorry, Mom, I should have brought this out earlier. Oh, wait, wait. I need the white and the yellow cheese to be separated. Not too late. Be a sub, Lucas. The last one is a uh, Monterey Jack. I don't know if that's separated. It's okay. <laughs> okay. It's just for the color. Dad, do you cut your onion like that too? Yeah. That's why I cut it like this. Cut the dad. And then you go like this. I like the way you do it, you know? It's very inventive. Because it's already cut in a certain way. You don't have to do it like that. Inventive? You know? Trying to make you feel better. We put this lobster shells in to get all that lobster fat in your mac. With the dry shiitake, shallots, mm. garlic, thyme, there we go. That's a gravy. That's a gravy. Ooh. Now we have the lobster Just stock. The lobster stock. We'll drain it.
First press, baby. So good. That's essence right there. That's gonna be from that. Uh, give me. Yeah. Just strain the au jus. We're looking at about four more minutes on this pasta. I'm making the bechamel. Don't burn yourself. One of the best designs to have a tray that cannot move out like that. Wow. Still needs a bit more time. So though. beautiful. You ready for the cheese part? Gruyere on top. Mmm. This mouth vlog now. You put milk too, right? Yeah. I want it to be a little drier. There's one stick of butter, so it's quite a lot. I think it needs a little bit more flour. Yeah. Okay, let's get this one. Perfect. I'm just winging it. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's doing. What do you think about this bechamel right now? Huh? Wow, that gruyere is really starting to smell really amazing. Go more milk, heavy cream too. Now that it's kind of thick enough, then we're gonna go in with our white cheeses. In here we have Monterey Jack, we have mozzarella. Okay, we're gonna go on low now. Low heat the rest of the way. Slowly starting to thicken up. It's like the consistency that we want. Yeah, this is gonna be so good. The secret ingredient is our lobster stock. With tomato paste, onion, rosemary, thyme, bay leaves, ginger, garlic, lobster essence. So yummy. So what you guys do while I was gone? Hello. Oh yeah, Chris is back. Hi. 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 It's a crazy butt over here. Lucas did all the cooking, you know, with dad. Cream spinach, juice, okay, and mac and cheese, one with lobster and one without. Yum. Pum daf noir. Pum daf noir. Right. Yes, it was potato owl. <laughs> potato, potato owl done You know why? It's because there's this milk tea in Taiwan. Milk tea owl lie. <laughs> what am I trying? What am I trying, father? You, you don't have to try it again. You tried it so many times. It's my mom's birthday. Everyone wish my mom happy birthday. Hi. 50. <laughs> Dad, is there anything you want to say? How Love come? my daughter. How come we only have- She's my favorite daughter. Lucas, you're my favorite younger brother. You and Guga take turns being my favorite brother. Oh, Juby Shuki! Hey, uh. Mac, um, daf noir, potato daf noir, um, daf noir, um, daf noir, um, daf noir. Regular mac and cheese due to shellfish <laughs> allergies, and then the prime rib. Prime. Look at you, so yeah, yeah. Didi, didi, oh yeah, try so. I made it all, gang. Didi, oh, ding, ding. Didi, oh, ding, 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 Cream of spinach. Good job. Kitty, can, can you hook her up with garnishes? That, a little gravy on the bottom. All right, now it's like yi yi or KK. They like it more cooked, but I still want to give them a nice cut of meat, especially for KK. KK, KK, that's for you. Oh, look at this guy. Right there. Hey, I'm Hoi Bay Gogo. So, Zai. So, Zai. Leg Zai. Potato. Oh. Whatever they like. Yee yee. So funny. Ah, damn. Lucas. Oh. That's cute. King Henry Cut. It's all you. Moha, hey. I'm feeling really sorry for those who don't eat meat right now. Chris. Yay, thank you. I will be eating. You can eat tonight. anywhere you want. You can eat in the living Two. room. Thank you, Daddy. No worries, no worries. This is my plate. That if anybody says. 
Leave this bro, room. they don't know how to eat meat. Body. Bruh. No. What's my thing? Thanks, Lucas. Lucas made all the mac and cheese and the spinach. And my mom made this. Thanks, my dad made this. Oh, wow. I'm gonna get one. Drew sweet potato casserole in it. Mmm. Crazy. Look at that lobster. I like the mac and cheese. So fire. Look at the. I made you your own big pot of mac and cheese. Mmm. That's really good. Potato oh, al light. Yeah, I got you. We can take the leftover. Pomme de fond noir. And mm. freeze it. For mm. tomorrow. Mmm. Sorry, siblings. Beef and gravy too. Gerber Gerber beef and gravy from Baby Food. So I'm gonna do some makeup. This is my last day. Tomorrow I fly back to New York. Addressing the background change, we moved houses. In this house, my parents built from the ground up for six years. It's something that they are very talented at and they realized later on in their marriage because having one restaurant doesn't really sustain three kids. And my parents have always had the dream of sending us to a school where we can learn two languages. Hence the reason why we are a bilingual family. So before anyone says anything, my parents have always been the kind of people who have emphasized entrepreneurship and just a lot of hard work and gratitude because that's how they have built up their careers. And my parents met in high school actually because they're high school sweethearts, which can be a little bit cray sometimes because when you marry someone at such a young age and then have a family with them in your 20s, I think now, I I cannot comprehend something like that, especially because I'm 23. And they had my brother over the restaurant when they're 26. So that's how old my older brother is actually. But my parents just work really, really hard, which inspires me to do the same, which is the whole reason why I moved to New York. And I feel very fortunate that I can pursue social media as a career because fashion has always been something that I'm interested in. So I made the move to New York when I graduated last year. And I was very hesitant about the cost of living but I think signing with a management and obviously seeing how many college graduates have been able to make a living out of beauty, fashion, makeup, anything skincare related. I just have a lot of friends who are in their 20s in New York as well doing the same thing. It just feels great that like I have a lot of like-minded friends and Allison is one of them. She's like one of my best friends who I met during COVID through social media, which is when we both started taking pictures and whatnot. It was a wave that wasn't popular at the time but I think a few years later it's a very common job for people to have. My parents didn't understand the idea of social media originally. I actually was going to pursue event planning but after things just started doing well and they saw that I could make a living income, be financially independent from college, they just let me go to New York and do my thing. So yeah that's why whenever we come home it's like a very sacred time for us because we can just catch up as family and I just I give so much props and respect to people who can like always have the camera out because it's like a whole different kind of stage presence that people have it's just so shocking because every time I meet people in New York they're so different from their online personalities or they have just mastered being on camera and I mean I've learned things I've seen things from far it's just all these different perspectives but it's inspiring because I feel like my family just like love telling their story the holiday used to always be a tricky time for us because I don't have any family in in Taiwan but my parents had decided to move us there because they felt like we would become more cultured we would improve our Mandarin cost of living was less so like our entire apartment in Taiwan was the size of our kitchen now it's because my parents worked very very hard so they can live the American dream give us the best education make sure that we were driven had our own passions and our own career goals and my parents have always told me to drop out early if there was something that I became talented in which I didn't do. I don't think I was especially slaying in any kind of talent, but I think it's nice to reflect during Thanksgiving. It's a season where people reach gratitude, and even though it's something that my parents emphasize and grain in our brains every single day.
single day, we're just especially thankful around Thanksgiving. The holidays can look so different for everybody. So I just, I guess I just wanted to give a disclaimer that our holidays are not always like what you see on camera. It's a lot of pressure for everyone to get together to just really enjoy their time at the dinner table. And dinner has always been very important in my family because it's where the five of us can just bond. And that's why we are so close. But I'm just letting everybody know that like the holidays online is not what you think it is. It's just what you see and it's just how it's edited. And this year was definitely a very, very successful Thanksgiving because everyone was helpful around the house and uh, my little brother helped cook. Just everyone's just being a good kid generally. But I would say in the past, holidays have always ended up in like tears, fights. Sometimes we wouldn't have dinner. And if you're going through something with your family, it's okay and it's normal because that's happened to me too. So it's just very common, especially for Asian parents because Asian parents have so much generational trauma. They just don't know how to handle it with their kids. And my family, we just always spend holidays, the five of us, because that's like our circle. And like, that's who we cherish most in our life. So makeup is done. I'm gonna continue on with the day because it's giving season. It's giving season. <laughs> What up, my brother? Let's try this again. Can you get up? We're gonna go to Target and get matching PJs. Cause that's what I thought of doing. Did you know it's Black Friday? I didn't know that. Our parents never let us go to Black Friday. Hello. Kiwi lime smoothie? Banana lime. Oh, banana lime. Give the rest to Chris. He's a little sick. What's this, Thai tea? That's so random. Why'd you make Thai tea? My dad's doing a menu for a new restaurant idea that he has. But the last restaurant he opened was Epic. <laughs> it was called Epic Cafe epic. in Taiwan. And he just like ran it based off of his mood and would just like randomly make spaghetti sometimes. And people were just kind of dysfunctional cause like, not gonna lie, the service industry in Asia is kind of like bot-like. It's less personality based, which kind of clashes with my dad. Hakeem bread, with the light toast with the chicken liver mousse. Butternut squash soup with creme fresh, toasted pumpkin seeds, and uh, onion confit. Yeah. Chicken liver mousse with quattro a piece, and you cognac didn't... butter. Ah, this is perfect. Mm, maybe a little bit more. Oh, you want that too? Sure, bring it up. Absolutely. All of it? All of it, all of it. Just cut up some cabbage, and carrot, avocado, green goddess, and that perfect bite of food. Ooh, yummy. Chive, garlic. Liver mousse with cognac butter. This is what it looks like Love as a whole. You know, I realized that hot cheese itself is salty. There we go, Baba. Mm. Look at that soft. The pate looks so good. Potato? Pate. Pate. Mmm. 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 I love pate. Mm. When mom hears me say mmm, she comes. That's a confirmation of this is good a really food. smart movie. We're always looking for the mmm after a bite. That right there. Yummy. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Pate. Mmm. Mmm. That's legit. Cold, hot. Pate is so delicious. Is this pink peppercorn? It's black peppercorn, ginger, clove, yeah. and nutmeg. Uh, Dip it. Dip it. Dip it. Are you sick, bro? Yeah, it's butter. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Perfect Gen Z food. Ready for that? Clear your, clear your palate first, because that's great bite. Ah. That is an incredible bite. Mm. Cognac butter. Can I bring a potato home? Yep. I made really? two more for you. I can bring to New York? Bring this on the airplane. <laughs> Got a touch of shallots. Mm. Thyme. Mm. Cognac. I might have killed mm. Mei Mei. Honestly. This is the dressing. It's just so good with vegetables. That's That's, right. That bread is also good with butternut squash. Oh. If you don't like vegetables, you just mm. haven't had a good vegetable. Mm. I knew. You put... Cottage cheese or just creme fresh? You just put cottage cheese, right? Cottage cheese, red wine vinegar, garlic and chives, and avocado. We could totally turn this to a ice cream. Oh yeah. Have you not seen those cottage cheese ice creams? But basically they take cottage cheese, apparently when you freeze it, it turns into ice cream. So they mix it with like bananas, whatever flavor you want. I remember pretending like I'm doing something. <laughs> this is um, butternut squash soup. With ginger, no meat product, just water. Vegan for me. There's an onion in it, olive oil, butter. These are the top. I'm uh, serving it with cream fresh, uh, toasted pumpkin seeds. The onions are yummy. Damn, why is your back so stiff? There's some muscles like. Why am I so soft? 
Ooh, corn foy. I feel like I always ruin her vlogs with my background stuff. What a great assistant. <laughs> Mama, Chris. I'm at it's Thanksgiving. Very, it's very uh, winter. Ooh, that's so pretty. Mm, so sweet. It's your favorite. The onion is amazing. Yummy? So good. Did you put, you, did you put any chicken stock, veggies? Yeah, there's onion in the chicken, in the, in the, in the soup, but there's no chicken product. So what did you do? There's no meat product. Just sweat onion with olive oil and butter, and then add the uh, butternut and squash, squash that's been scooped up. The puree, and then you blended it. One bay leaf, water, simmer. Oh yeah, ginger when you're adding the onions. This will taste like cold away. The ginger and the crispy throat. onion makes it a little Asian. Oh yeah, dad definitely owns a clay. Now he looks like Edward Ang's dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a great meal for a day after Thanksgiving. Mm. Tasty, light, delicious, winter. So to balance off all that heavy. Yeah. Chris, it's okay? Emptied out my stomach. What was your phrase about that? Thank you soup. How many carrots? Do you like it? Good with that green goddess. Yeah. Thing. What is that, Lucas? Kong san. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, today we gotta make... It's so zoomed in on your nostrils right now. <laughs> Cabbage. Take What's your that? green goddess dip. Spread it. I knew you were gonna heat up prime rib. <laughs> Better. I had a nightmare yesterday that I was in the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> My dream was about Coriolanus snow. <laughs> right on that edge. Ooh. Yeah. I feel the heat. Here, here, here. Just have fish. Pop your hands. Pop with the carbs. Mm. 